Okay, in this lecture, we'll learn the frequency distributions. Now, let's start with the frequency of a particular observation. So, the frequency of the particular observation is the number of time, number of times the observation occurs in data. So, here's, uh, for example, you collected a data. Now let's say you got two, two, three, three, and three, four, three, and then like four again, four again. Okay, this is a very, uh, very short example. And uh, the frequency of here, the frequency of two is, let's say, how many times it's repeated? Two times. So the frequency of three, one, two, two again. But how about four? goes like four, the frequency of four is three. So this is clear, right? Now the frequency means like the count. So you count them, so how many times they appear. The frequency distribution is um, a summary display for the distribution of data. So basically here, I mean, if you take this into account, this one, this data. So two is repeated how many times it's, uh, here are the counts here or the frequencies. Uh, the frequency now uh, three is repeated twice and then four is repeated uh, three times as you see here so this is we call it the frequency distribution now we will see the types of frequency distribution so when organizing the data the first we uh, have the raw data and raw data is is okay then uh, in the raw data if it is qualitative data or quantitative data we'll look at them and then uh, if this is a qualitative data or variable so we call the distribution categorical frequency distribution and if it's quantitative data and sometimes we use grouped frequency distribution or ungrouped we will see the details but this is the main um, types of frequency distribution now let's, uh, okay, I will give some quick examples for each uh, distribution type. Now uh, for the qualitative variables, we use uh, categorical frequency distribution. And for the quantitative, quantitative variables, we have ungrouped frequency distribution and grouped frequency distribution. Now here's a quick example. So you, we look at the blood types of 25 students. Here we got them. This is, we call it raw data. And then we look at the blood types and we make the frequencies and find the percentages. Okay, for now, we don't pay attention to uh, what to do here. And just look at uh, uh, what is wanted here, the blood frequency percentage. Look at the differences here. For the ungrouped frequency distribution, the number of siblings, sibling means like brothers or sisters here, brothers or sisters, they are both called siblings, okay. Now let's erase this part. Now we collected this data from 20 students, then this is raw data. And then we write them as classes, one, two, three, four, these are the siblings here, the number of siblings. And then we count like how many times do we see them in here? And then we calculate relative frequency, relative frequency, okay. Uh, we will learn all of them. So this is uh, just to give you an example of this group. We look at the height of 50 students and now it's hard to write all of them in the classes, so we make this type of classes, which are intervals here. So here, the, look at the difference here. The classes are just numbers here, but the classes are here intervals. So this is why we have grouped frequency, why we have ungrouped frequency distribution for the quantitative variables. And look at the difference here. This is A, B, this is qualitative, as you see here. These here, they're quantitative, it's just numbers. Okay, we will learn how to do this, okay, later. Now, uh, categorical distribution, as I said, it's, it was a blood type. Uh, in our example, it might be a particular affiliation, which is a religious affiliation. It might be gender or major field uh, of study, marital status. Um, now, in categorical frequency distribution, uh, we do, uh, we find a class, and this is easy. Now, if you look at the frequencies, we make tallies. This is not very necessary, but anyway, we teach it this way, then percent. So let's look at this example here. 
construct a frequency distribution for the data side, which represents tw uh, blood types of 25 students. Here, this is the raw data here. Uh, now, we want to do uh, the class and the tallies and the uh, frequency. So here, um, you write here as the classes like A, B, A, B, and zero. So these are uh, the variables. I mean, this is the blood type variable here. So we write the types of the blood here, blood types. Blood types. This is your variable here, the qualitative variable. So the tally is you're counting them. Let's count them. It is A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So tally means this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And do the same thing. I mean, 5, you can write here 5. And, okay, um, we will do all of them together. Let me write the total here. So B, we can do, we can count B, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it's like that, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, it's 7. Now, um, you write, I mean, you write the others. Okay, uh, no need to spend time on it. So I will just erase them and I will write you directly. I will tell you um, the numbers here. So this is tallies, like we, we counted them here from here. From each of them, we counted them here. And then uh, it is five, nine, seven, four, and the total is 25 students here, 25. And when you add them, you will get 25. And how do you get the percentages? You, you divide by five, divided by five, five divided by the total. You see here, five divided by 25 times 100 will give you 20%. And um, we have these, so five. And here there's a mistake, I guess this has to be here. I guess this has to be here, this has to be. So it goes, this one is here. So this is a mistake here. For four, we have the same thing. And this is how you calculate the percentage. Uh, you write F, the frequency divided by the total. Totally here is N. And then multiply with 100. So you are doing like five or 25 times 100, so which makes your 20. And uh, nine times, nine or 25 times 100 is equal to 36. Okay, now as I said, this here, it belongs to nine, okay, not, not seven. Anyway, this uh, makes a frequency table, a uh, categorical frequency, ta frequency table, because here we have qualitative variable, which is blood type. Now, let's do the same thing for this one. Uh, okay, let's read what, uh, what, uh, what is this, okay. 30 uh, employees from a company are asked if they are satisfied with their current job. The responses of these employees are recorded below. Um, the very represents very satisfied. Here we have very. And uh, somewhat, uh, we have somewhat means somewhat satisfied. And none stands for not satisfied at all. None, we have also none. So we want to construct a frequency table for these uh, data. Now, what is the uh, class here? We have this very satisfied, well, let's say very, I mean, it's better you write these, you're very satisfied, but anyway, I will use the shortcuts here, very somewhat, and there is a none here. So you can make the tallies here. Um, you can, okay, let, we will do them together. Very, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 vary, so if you want to make a tally, so it will be five lines, no, 10 lines, so it will be 10. Now somewhat, somewhat is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, I think it will be 14. So if you want to make a tally, to make tallies, it's this, so it will be 14. And uh, the total will be 13. You can do it from here, or if the total is 30, or you can make the none. I mean, you can count them one, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Is it true? Yes, if you want to make the tallies, it's this. 
now it's 30 okay now we got 30 and what are the percentages like 10 over 30 so it's we say percentage it's out of 100 okay 3 over 30 times 100 so which will make um 33.3 something like this and now the 14 over 30 and then we have so you calculate this one in 6 over um, 30 times 100 so which is 20 percent and here I think this has to be something like 46.666 something like this and the total will be of course it will be 100 percent now this is the frequency table for this data. Now let's look at the uh, grouped and ungrouped frequency distribution. Now uh, this is uh, here we look at the range range of the data and the number of observed values in the data set. I mean if the range and the, uh, the data is large, we try to do the group frequency distribution. If range is relatively small and a single data value is used for each class, then we use the ungrouped frequency distribution. And so, for example, if you're talking about the number of siblings, siblings, so it might be like zero, one, two, three, you know, it goes up to maybe seven. In, but so, um, but if, if you talk about the GPAs of the students, of students, uh, like 100 students, it will go like, uh, for it starts from 0. Point, uh, something and it goes up to like 4.00 and you might have lots of different things here like 361 it might be 3289 it might be you know there are lots of uh, uh, numbers here so for this reason it's better you use a group distribution here and for this one you use ungrouped so the range here is small but if you you know sort them it will be like lots of numbers here lots of different numbers numbers this is the, the main difference now uh, ungrouped frequency distribution is used uh, essentially for the discrete data and it is best when the range of data is less than 10 units uh, this is uh, i gave you this example now, uh, what we do in our group distribution, our frequency distribution, it's almost like uh, the categorical one. That we have class frequency, relative frequency. Okay, these they are new now, the relative frequency and cumulative frequency. Now let's see them in the <coughs> example. <coughs> now the quality control uh, department examined 20 engines, which they selected randomly from a manufacturing company. And uh, the, it shows, the data shows the number of defective circuits per engine. So uh, no defect, no defect, no defect, one defect, one defect. It goes like this. So um, construct an ungrouped frequency distribution. So look at the values here. So the, when you look at the values, you have one, zero, three, four. Okay, these are the different values. The number of different values are very small. So we have only like five different values. So we will use ungrouped frequency distribution, ungrouped frequency distribution. Now let's do them. Now <clears throat> for zero, uh, we calculate the frequency. Okay, what's the zero? Okay, one, two, three. Well, the frequency, okay, three, let's, okay. Let's calculate the other source. One, two, count the others, four. And for two, one, two, three, four, five, six. For three, one, two, three, four, four, we have three. Okay, we counted all of them. Now the total should be, total should be what? It has to be 20 engines. Is it? Is it 20? Let's see, seven, six, 13. Yeah, 20. So this is 20. So it means we counted them correctly. Now the relative frequency, you calculate the relative frequency by just dividing by uh, these frequencies by the total here. So it will be, okay, you can use a calculator for it. It will be 0 0.15. Now uh, this will be something like 0 0.2. And this will be something like 0 0.3. And this is like 
this is 0 0.2 and this is 0 0.3 now 0 0.15 again and this will be just one at the end this is the symbol is for total so this means total okay you add them now the cumulative frequency is uh, something uh, kind of new but it's very easy uh, this, this is saying like so how many uh, how many are less than or equal to zero so it's uh, this is the same as three now this guy says how many of them are less than or equal to one so in this case you have to count four and three together so it will be four plus three it's seven now this one says the cumulative frequency for two so it will how many less than two so you count three four six because they're zero one two so they are less than or equal to um two okay uh then you can do for this and for this you know the the easy thing is like you add each time the four you divide you add it so it will be 21 you add this one again to this so it will be 24 no i'm sorry guys it will be three four seven and six it will be 13 sorry this is 13 now this will be 17 and at the end when you add you will get 20 the last one should be equal to the total all the time because less than four or equal we have 20 numbers here okay now i will erase all of them and now i will let you see the numbers uh, better so i will i use my writing but now you will see everything well written so here it is so this is you will get that simple size here as you see here you got the simple size 20. okay now let's do the same thing here uh we asked 24 students five general knowledge questions the number of correct answer given by each student is uh shown below here we asked the students like four i mean five student five questions and this is the number of the correct answers by the students now we want to do uh, an ungrouped frequency distribution uh, because we have five, I mean six answers. Uh, the frequency of zero is one, and frequency of one is one, two, three, and the two, one, two, three, four, five, and then let's look at three, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. Four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. So it will be five. So is it 24 students? We expect it to 24. One, three, four, nine, six, fifteen, and this will be 24. Okay, good. So we got the total 24. This is good. So relative frequency, okay, one over 24. Uh, 3 over 24 so calculator you can do calculator calculate you can use calculator uh, okay i will do only this one uh, because i know it's 1 over 4 so it will be 125 so you can use a calculator for them okay use a calculator uh, 4 over 24 0 0.16 something like that this is 5 or 24 uh, something okay you, you find these and then Uh, you can find the rest, so it will be one, the relative frequency in total, this is total here. And the cumulative frequency is just same, like less than or equal to zero, how many? It's one, less than or equal to one, so how many? One and three, this is zero and one, it's included, it's, it will be four. So you can add each time a new number, add six, 15, add four, 19, at five and you got 24 so this 24 24 you see they match so this is how you do it so to hear uh, these for these you can use calculator okay use calculator I mean I, I don't have calculator right now so you can do them by the cal with the calculator 
okay now grouped frequency distribution here uh, the important part here is this part here making the classes I mean, these are easy you know th these are easy but here for the classes you have to do the class width class midpoint class boundaries these are these are related to each other and then the class midpoint also you will calculate the class limits they're all um, related to each other so now we will learn so we will learn how to do them so we will learn uh, how to do them now when uh, during the class okay first when determining the classes so classes means like we want to get the intervals here okay uh, now you find the range so you look at the data you uh, find the lowest value and the highest value and you take the difference you look at the range and by using the okay after range we select the number of classes uh, generally it's from 5 to 20 and this is mostly given to us if, if if we ask you to do such thing we will ask you we will give you the number of classes mostly okay the class width we will find class limits and uh, then the class boundaries and the class midpoints then after them we will do the counting so we will look at the frequencies and we will find the relative frequency and the cumulative frequencies okay these uh, you will see them in the example better okay now uh, these are giving you some detailed information about the class limits class boundaries um, <clears throat> now uh, for example here the class limits are like you have class here okay it's it's an interval like this for example two four so this is called these are class limits here so th these are class limits this one here is the lower limit lower this is the upper limit okay this is what it says here now class boundaries uh, you have the class limits and then class boundaries now this is also another interval here so if it is just integer so you subtract 0 0.5 from the lower class limit which is uh, you make here 2 okay 2 minus 0 0.5 so you write here 1.5 1.5 this makes the class boundary here 1.5 and now for the second one here for the second one you take the 4 you add 0 0.5 so it makes 4.5 so now this is telling you this information lower class boundary this one is lower class limit it's 2 minus 0 0.5 upper class boundary is okay now let's okay here let's try to match them so here so this is the boundaries here lower class boundary is equal to this is equal to sign is not e okay equal to lower class limit 2 and a 0 0.5 which is 1.5 this is lower class boundary here this is 1.5 now now the upper class boundary this is the upper class limit which is 4 plus 0 0.5 which makes 4.5 which is here so this is the uh, relation between the class boundaries and the class limits now if data set are not whole number uh, and they're in decimals the class limits might be decimals also and then the class boundaries fall to an additional level of decimals so for example your uh, boundary your class limits are 4.5 5.5 and the class boundary for that class would be 455 555 you see we add or subtract 0 0.05 you see it's one number after the decimal so we have two numbers after the decimal here so if it is 4.57 the class limits are 4.57 57 now it will be you add you subtract 0 0.005 you add 0 0.05 here so as you see we have two decimals here we have three decimals here so this is an important thing
Okay, now uh, the class limit. The class limit is uh, class. Sorry, class width. So it's we said here this is uh, two, two, four, and this is these are the class limits. Two, four, and this is class boundary. Boundary is like 1.5. We said 4.5. Now the class width here is um, this one here. The class width is 4.5 minus 1.5 which is three so you, you look at the difference between these two it's three which makes class width or uh, you look at here five and six here now it's five and seven here also you can calculate this one as five minus two is equal to three so this is the class width also they are same so this is you know what it says uh, the lower limit of the class minus the lower limit of the next higher class uh, this is five minus two okay this uh, you have to change them okay this, they have to replace and they have to be replaced the upper boundary and the lower boundary also you can find it by this you know here or you can look at here these two now the class point is uh, you add okay when it comes to your this is your class limits and the class boundaries you got two four and here you got 1.5.5 the midpoint here the class midpoint is you add them divide by two two plus four divided by six so sorry for two it's equal to three or you can divide these i mean you can add and divide I, it will be the same thing here so you see they can be fine by these two methods like limits or you can use the boundaries then you will get the same thing it's a little uh messed up but uh, we will see you will see them in the examples uh, easier now uh, rules for classes in grouped uh, frequency distribution the classes should be uh, bit, the number of classes should be between 5 and 20 and uh, it's better the class numbers be an odd number and the classes must be mutually exclusive it must you say there is no overlap between the classes and the classes must be exhaustive it means they should accommodate all the data they should contain all the data and nothing will be left out and the classes uh, must be in the same width uh, so this is important now we'll check them now let's look at this example now a study done on 50 students practicing volleyball at uh, volleyball at university included a, a question about their height throughout data presents the heights of these students rounded to the nearest centimeter now look at here the heights of the students so we want to construct a frequency distribution for five classes so we give you the number of the five classes so here it's better we use a grouped distribution now uh, determine the classes okay in, in determining the classes first you find the class width the class width I mean for the class which for first you find the highest value and the lowest value of I mean you find the range so that makes highest value what is it highest value it's under 67 79 and then the lowest value is under 50 you subtract and you get 29 okay let's keep it and the number of classes it's equal to five I mean this is given I mean you can choose it but it's given uh, to us in the in the in question now the class width here is the range divided by number of classes it's 29 over 5 but it will round to up i mean round it up so it will be six so we will have six classes now one thing here is always round up if there is a remainder so if you have something like decimal here round it up and if there is no remainder you will need to add, add extra class to accommodate all data so it means like if you got 25 over uh let's say 24 over six you got four 
the, the class number of classes will be four plus one okay so what it says is like if you get you know four and a whole number then it's better you add one more class um now this is what uh, what it says okay if you have decimals here so round it up now <clears throat> You got six. Okay, what will we do with six? Now <clears throat> we start <clears throat> with the lowest one. So you always put the lowest one here, this 150. Hundred fifty. Put it here, the lowest one. We generally choose the lowest one, okay, as the first class limit. Then so look at here, this is six, the class width. So look at here, it has to be, the difference should be 6. So you so you can do it like 62, add 6, add 6, add 6, so it will be under 74. Now, <clears throat> when it comes to this part here, so what can we do here? When it comes to this part, it will be equal to, okay, this, you can do here, 156 but this has to be in the class limits it cannot be under 56 no there's no overlap so for this reason since they are all whole numbers you subtract one since they're all whole numbers okay so there so it has to be 155 then so events you get that 155 then this is easy because there will be the six it will be 160 one the difference again six that has to be 67 then this has to be 163 and this has to be 78 this is how we do it okay now let's i will show you okay the good looking numbers okay the 169 now let's find the class boundaries uh remember that i mean we do it this way subtract 0 0.5 and since they're all uh whole numbers we subtract 0 0.5 from each lower each lower class limit and add 0 0.5 to each upper class limit for example for the first one you this 150 and 155 you uh this is how you find the class boundaries you subtract 0 0.5 and you add 0 0.5 and this will be under 49.5 to 155.5 sorry i mean let me get this okay so these will be the high here. You have 150 to 155. This is your class. And the class boundaries here it will be under 49.5 and 155.5. So this is telling you. And you will do it for each of them. So you will do them for each of the classes. And how to get the midpoints. You basically add them and divide by two. Um, now let me show what happens at the end now you see here <clears throat> hundred and fifty you subtract zero point five you get this one hundred and fifty five you add zero point five subtract zero point five add zero point five you see you do it for all of them and then you add uh, sorry this is about the boundaries now then for the class limits you add them divide okay you add and divide by two you add them divide by two you add divide by two you add divide by two so as you see here so this is giving you the example here exactly uh we add the uh, limits and then we add by divide by two and you can do the same thing for these they, they will be they will have the same thing you can take the averages of the boundaries or the limits it doesn't matter so now it gives the class midpoints 
now we are almost done with the classes yeah we're done with the classes and let's look at the frequencies now okay then <clears throat> here let's count them here guys this one and this one i mean they're when uh counting them they're in here 150 one and it's up to 155 150 54 155 uh is there any 150 something no so 155 up to 155 it's this how many one two three okay we're right here three and then you calculate this 150 to 161 and I don't see 150 something. I see here 160 uh, here one. And is there any 155? Okay, okay, there there is one. There is one. It makes two. There is 61, three. So it will take some time then. Okay, guys. By the way, you count them. Okay, just I will do the counting here. And I will leave it to you, the rest, 150, 255, this one, yes. Okay, 152, okay, we forget this one. 50, 152, 154, 4 5 151 1 2 3 4 5 okay is it true no 6 okay guys uh, i will i will not do the rest i mean i will just show the numbers here 6 3 7 14 and 20. Now the relative frequency, what you do here is basically you divide 6 by, okay, now you divide 6 by what? Uh, the, the total number, what's the total number? Okay, the total number is 50. You know, how many? In total, we have 50. 50 values here, right? So 50 values, or it has to be total 50. And then each Frequency you divide by 50, like 6 over 50, it's this. 3 over 50, now you have this one. Now, 7 over 50, you will get this one, and then uh, you keep doing it, and this will give you the relative frequency. Now, in total, they add to 1. One thing left, which is cumulative frequency, now cumulative frequency is found by, uh, like the previous one, now, for example, look at here, uh, 6, same, and then 6 plus 3, 9, 6 plus 3 plus, nine, I mean, 9 plus 7, it's 16, and uh, 16 plus 14 is 30, and then 30 plus 20 is 50. So it's like the same the, as uh, like the previous part, you know, it's same. So then you get at the end 50 observations. Now um, let's try to solve this one. Uh, let's try to do this, uh, this exercise. The frequency uh, distribution below gives the uh, amount of sugar in milligrams per liter. And uh, it has this distribution. Now it says find A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and away, all, all, all of them. So here, uh, how can we solve them? Let's use the shortcuts here, the class width. Class width is what? 5. So it has to go like 5 here. It has to be 13. And then the other one should be 18. So as you see, A and B will be 13 and 15. Now, uh, what about the class boundaries? So since these are all whole numbers, we add 0 0.5. Okay, this has to be 18. And this has to be, okay, uh, you subtract. 0 0.5 here you add 0 0.5 here so 2.5 and this is uh, 7.5 look here uh, these are they might be same in the boundaries they're same but here they're not same okay be careful this is the difference between them 
Now the class uh, midpoints, like you add them, 8 plus 12 divided by um, 20, I mean divided by 2, 10, right? So you got 10 here. Okay, you can do the rest here. They are easy uh, because here, okay, let me okay, let me finish this part here. 13 to what? You add 5 here, 17, and this one will be to do you add five here um, because the class width is same for each um, limit you know lower limit and upper limit so you can find the rest so I said here this class midpoint will be 10 here I said okay and here it will be uh, when you add them divide by them is 25 you can write the total here okay we will need it later but now you can also calculate this one the frequency okay it's not wanted by the way the frequency you can do the frequency uh this way like three five two eight h and eight so they will add to 40 so you can calculate them and subtract these numbers from 40 and you can get h but one one way one other way is this i think that's an easy way now you say this what is uh, this what is this number here the relative frequency is h divided by 40 is equal to 0 0.35 uh, so you can multiply 40 with 0 0.35 0 0.35 so it will be 14 so it has to be 14 now and now the relative frequency is like 2 what is 2 divided by 40 8 divided by 40 and we can also do this now cumulative frequency is 3 3 and this is 5 so it makes 8 what is this this is 2 then this will be 10 because you add I mean you get this one and you can get you can add all these 3 5 2 8 4 14 so it has to be 32 and as you see here, 32 plus 8 so it will give you 40 so everything fine Okay, guys, I mean, if you want to do it yourself, okay, um, uh, here are the answers. I mean, you can repeat uh, the question yourself. Try to answer it by yourself. Now, here is the solution. Now, uh, let's look at the um, questions here. When data are collected on your form, they are called say raw data now the uh, the blank of a specific class is the number of data values contained in it so you said two four for example you said how many here how many here between two four what is this this is called we call it frequency so the frequency of a class is the number of the values taken I mean contained in here so it will be frequency now Zahra wants to construct a frequency distribution for the education level of the employees at Aramco company what type of distribution would be best to construct a frequency distribution to education level so then he will say he will ask the employees that they will say BS degree PhD BS MS he will get the raw data something like this right so then you will write the variables like PhD, how many? So you write frequency here, MS, BS. This is, okay, then maybe five here, 10, like here, let's 100. So this is a qualitative variable, you see. If we have qualitative variable, like the blood type, what type, what, what we use here? Categorical frequency distribution. now let's look at here find the boundaries of this so let's be careful here because we have two decimals in the limits so the two decimals here so then we have to add no subtract 0 0.005 and add 0 0.005 so when you do this job you will get d okay now the okay what's the midpoint of the class so you can do it like 13 plus 16 as a divided by 2 it's which is 2.5 
and uh, state why the frequency uh, distribution flow are incorrectly constructed. So you look at here, uh, it has to be six. Okay, this is six and this is six and this here is six and this is five. Below's okay because the class limit should be same. Each time the class should be six here, but six 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 five. This is the problem, and we have the same here. Five nine. It's four four four. But here three. One problem one. This is problem one. It's it's not only this. It's also these in the class limits. They cannot be same. They are overlapping. So this is problem two here. So you say the classes are overlapped and the width is not uniform. And for this one, this is a kind of five, ten, five, five. So you see, uh, we skipped one of them where uh, we the, the class width is not uniform. So this is the problem. I think he should have done like five, five. You know, he should. Uh, a class has been okay. Let's say forgotten here, omitted or forgotten. Okay, now let's look at the other one. It's five, five. No, it's five, six, and then six, then three. So you see, they are not the same. So directly, it's the problem here. Now let's look at this uh, worksheet problems. Uh, Selma wants to construct a frequency distribution for the favorite social media, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Snapchat, etc., for that students prefer to use. Uh, what is the appropriate, okay, take it as appropriate frequency distribution. So now, um, now she's asking the people like whether they use Facebook, you know, Twitter. Some people says Facebook, and then the other one says Facebook. This is your raw data here. And some people says Twitter, some people says Snapchat. Now she's asking, and now we have this Facebook, Twitter. These are what here? The Snapchat. These are. Uh, so now we will do the frequency table of this. So these are what qualitative. Um, it's making a qualitative um, variable. Uh, what type of frequency is it? So these are just Facebook, Twitter, just words. These are qualitative. So we use for the qualitative two, we use categorical frequency distribution. You remember them, these, for these, we use the numbers. The numbers, the, uh, the variables are the numbers. But for the category, uh, categorical frequency distribution, the uh, variable should be a qualitative variable. Now let's look at here. Uh, find the class width. Okay, let's say class width and uh, class boundaries of the first class. Now the class width, uh, if it's given to you this way, you can directly say this is class width. This is 53 minus 50. This is your class width. This will be then three class width will be three so it has to be here or here and um, the boundaries for the first class first class is 50 52 okay let's look at the boundaries so you subtract 0 0.5 right here and add 0 0.5 so what do you get 49.5 and 52.5 these are the boundaries the class boundaries for the first class so it has to be question the the answer will be b now a group of 120 students were surveyed about their interest in a new international studies program interest was measured in terms of high medium or low low and 30 students re responded high interest, and 50 students responded medium, and 40 students responded low. How many? Okay, what's the percentage of the students with high interest? Let's say how many percent of the students has high interest? So uh, <clears throat> for this one, no need to make a frequency table. Uh, <clears throat> how do you get, I mean, 
And what's the percentage of students with the high interest? It's 30 students with the high interest. What's the total? The total is 120. And how do you find the percentage? You multiply with 100, so it has to be 25. So it is 25%. Now let's look at the class width of 207. Now, uh, it's not given this way, but it says 27. So how can you find here 27? Now, if it is 27 and these are whole numbers, you can, okay, this here, if the lower here is 7, then this will be directly one more, 8. And then you look at the distance, the difference between them, it's 6. Difference is 6, so this will be the class width, 6. If they are all numbers, so you can look at it this way, like 2, 7. And if it is like 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 7.5, .5, it's better you add 0 0.5, not 1. Now, uh, let's look at here, uh, the, uh, consider the following frequency distribution. The cumulative frequency is 9. I mean, it's uh, given, and we want to find the frequency. Uh, you know, um, the first one is always same, 9. And uh, here, the frequency, you add these two, 9 plus A, it gives you, sorry, uh, 9 plus A will give you 11. So this is cumulative, this is frequency. This, do you remember? I, I think you remember this one. So what makes 11? 2 makes 11. So how about this? 2 plus 9 plus what makes 23? So 11 plus 12 will make nine okay or okay we can keep doing it this way or you can say if this is the cumulative frequency you can say nine what's the difference nine eleven is two what's the difference between these two it's twelve what's the difference between them it's nine what's the difference between them it is thirteen so now you can say it's nine two twelve nine thirteen if you go from here to here, so you add, you get, okay? But here we are trying to get back to, get back, uh, get back from, you know, cumulative frequency to frequency. So this is how you can do it. Uh, please <clears throat> look at the example here and try to do it by yourself. And uh, group, uh, construct a group frequency distribution with the class limits uh, for the data shown below. Uh, let's see if the class limits or classes are uh, properly um, determined. Uh, the class width is 10, 10, 10, 10. And the same thing happens here, 10, 10, 10. So when you look at here, uh, they look all fine. Okay. Okay, all the, lim all the classes look okay. Now let's look at the frequency then, frequencies. How many numbers between 41 and 50? 41 and 50, one, two, what else? Okay, it's two now. Okay, I have this one, this one, and this one. Okay, it's eliminated, it's three. Now how about 51, 60, 51, 60, 51, I don't see 51, 52, 53. Uh, okay, it goes up to, okay, one, two, three, only three, three, yes, three, yes, two, no. Okay, we have only this one left, uh, 61, 70, 61, one, two, three, four. And the rest, bigger than 70, so it has to be four. But not five, so this is um, the uh, correct distribution. Now, when data is collected using quantitative 
quantitative which means numbers and continuous variable continuous variables or with decimals and it will be large i mean a large data set okay we we generally use the continuous variable with decimals and also with large data sets so uh, which which distribution we can use here okay definitely not categorical because it requires not numbers it's words cumulative frequency distribution is something else and the cumulative frequency is different so we have to use grouped or ungrouped for the numbers so if we require the decimals we have to use the intervals so if, which uses the intervals grouped frequency uses the intervals here so you see here I mean, it doesn't have to be decimals, but it has to be, you know, uh, if the if it is large, we can use the group frequency distribution. Now, the weekly earnings of 150 employees of a company are summarized in the following table. Um, find A, B, C, so uh, find A and B. Uh, this is easy, A, it's class width is 200 and then goes like 200 so the difference should be 200 so what is a now a should be 100 I mean 900 sorry now when it comes to uh, what is okay let's do B here what is B now uh, you can find a total here by using two things one we have uh, the number of the, uh, the values should be 150 because we collected 150 uh, values from employees from 150 employees this is reason one uh, or if you don't want to use this you can also say this is 150 and this they should be same the last relative frequency should be equal to the total so this is reason two okay now you can use both reasons now we get 150 uh, now we can uh, use this here the, the total of the frequencies should be 150 so 39 plus uh, 52 plus B plus 25 plus 10 plus 6 is equal to 150 and when you do this calculation you will get B equal to 18 okay uh, is it true okay B is equal to 18 we got it from here okay uh what okay uh what is this upper limit of third limit third limit is 570 and this is 900 and it says the upper limit of the third one the class it will be again 900 so that because this is the upper limit a for the third one now uh let's come to the frequent the cumulative frequencies uh let's calculate them okay the cumulative frequencies okay uh, when calculating this I mean this will tell us I mean whether we did correct or not this 18 we will see now 150 minus 6 it will give you the previous one which is 144 144 minus 10 it will be 134 and then 134 minus 25 it will be 109 109 minus 18 it will be 9 to 1 91 minus 52 it's 39 so we've reached it so it means our 18 is okay so these are the values uh you can think about this also we are we can do them by summing them okay by summing them uh you can each time you can sum them okay there are several ways of doing it whatever you like i mean it depends on your experience you'll find the class midpoint for all classes um there's an easy way of doing this because um, okay, this was 9 to 1, this is 199, this is 144, this was like 18. Uh, class midpoints, they also keep this 200 difference, so you can directly say it's 200, 200, and now this will be 9995, and this will be uh, 7995, and this is 5995. 
the class width is definitely 200 I mean, from here or from here you can tell the class width is 200 so this is how we do it uh, okay guys I mean when you get when you get used to it this is very easy uh, if it is your first time you, you might want to look at the slides before now a survey asked if people would like to spend the rest of their careers with uh, their present employees, their jobs, and this has to be jobs. So you're asking the people if they're good, I mean, if, if you want to keep the job or if you want to change your career. Um, these results are shown in the tables, so the answers and the frequency. So uh, what's the name of the above table? I mean, what is, okay, it's better we say the type here. The type of the table here is, okay, we see the answers here. They are not numbers. So this will be a categorical frequency distribution. distribution. Now find the total number of observations. Uh, or, I mean, if you want to give real name, so it, it might be like the, uh, <clears throat> the answers, the frequency uh, of the answers of the employees, you can say. But I think he means here uh, the type. The total uh, number of observations. Uh, don't don't worry about this like we will make it clear if we ask you something it will be just type uh, Find the total number of observations. The total number here is uh, it has to be here the total uh, We don't know the total, but we can find it by using this uh, to, and 10, 10 over total will be 20% 20% means this Then you multiply 20 times the total will be equal to 1,000. So the total will be, if you do it, so it will be 1,000 over 20, which is 50. So when the total will be 50, so it's 50. So what is A now? A, A plus 15 plus 10 is equal to 50. So which gives you 25. And how about B? We say this is 50 and this is 25. So here is 50%, 20%. What's left? The 100, it has to be 100%, so it has to be 30%. Now, the social assistant of Public Center for Social Self Self Welfare was interested in the members requesting assistance. <coughs> He randomly selected 100 members and found the number of requests for assistance made by each member. So 100 people, they asked for the requests. Okay. And uh, they, they did the request many times maybe. So uh, they kept a record of it. So the results of his selection are below. So zero request, 10, 10 people did not do any request like uh, 17 people did one request and 33 one two requests so it goes like this so the above table corresponds to which type of frequency distribution so classes are numbers but they're discrete numbers that we don't have intervals so no groups no groups no intervals no groups so it has to be ungrouped frequency distribution. This is the idea here, this ungrouped frequency distribution. This is the answer for this. Now uh, let's look at A and B. A and B here, A. Uh, so it, it does it give you the total? Where is the total here? The total is 100. It's 100 members, so it has to be the total here is 100. And if, okay, uh, I see a mistake here. It has to be zero, by the way. Okay. Now, total A, A, okay, the relative frequency is given here. So A divided by the total, 
will give us 0 0.05. So A divided by 100 is equal to 0 0.05. So A is what? You multiply them. So it will be just 5. So A should be equal to 5. You can also add them. You can get the total here also. So A is 5. What about B? B is 10 over 100. So B is 10 over 100. The total, which is 0 0.1. So B is equal to 0 0.1. Because 10 divided by the total. So as you see. Okay, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. It was a quick video. So for this reason, I wrote that. I mean, I hope you understand everything. Uh, thanks for watching.